So as a lot of you know, I'm in the process of completely refitting a narrowboat that I purchased about a year and a half ago. Yeah, it was never meant to be a project. I was meant to go continuous cruising. Me, me, me. And yeah, I've been living on it too. So today onto the kitchen, I've completely refitted this kitchen with a sort of rustic-y style -y. I'm just working on the floor at the moment. See, I've cleared all this little area here, up here so that we can... Uh... We? What, what am I talking about? Me! Me, me, me! But I have obviously got someone doing all the hard bits for me. And her name is Rebecca Crowbot, my partner in crime. What can I say? She loves it. So when you put the floorboards down, what you do is put a little splodge of glue on the black, on the black, on the back put it into position and then you would ordinarily tap a nail through the tongue and groove bit to give it some extra stability so it doesn't move about too much. So at first I was thinking, you know what, I'll just tap them in manually. However, because of this lip, the closer you get to the lip, it's going to get really hard. You just probably end up smashing the top of the piece of flooring. I've had two ideas. One, either go and buy a really cheap nail gun or have a staple gun. Buy the nail gun. I knew as soon as I mentioned nail gun that you would run away with the idea. You gonna go for it? This is going straight in. I can't see this working. Staples aren't strong enough, are they? I went through the wood fine, but the staples are just diddy, so... It does actually go through the wood. I don't think I will be able to use this because I've just seen maximum staple size is 8mm and I think we'd need quite a bit longer than that. You double. Right, a nail gun it is. Hey! <laughs> That's exciting, isn't it? Titan's gonna get his little baby brother. When I think nail gun, I always think Home Alone. So this is a very exciting moment for Chrissy Crowbot. You are kind of akin to Kevin. Yeah, but he was pretty handy, weren't he? He was. I'm not. <laughs> Excited to be picking up little baby Titan's older brother. He's been inside for, uh, for many years. He's hopeful that he's had time to think. <laughs> Have you ever used a, a nail gun before? Yeah, I think so. I'm a first timer. I'm just excited because we're getting a nail gun, which is made by the brand Titan. Bex is excited just to get the kitchen done, like most people. And then when we got into Screwfix and started browsing through that their one. new up-to-date electronic catalogue, we uh, came to a problem. So, imagine my hands as the tongue and groove. You have this little ledge that slots into a piece so that the two floorboards sit nice and flush together. Now the way the floors were put down previously is on this little ledge, this piece was put into place, a nail was put down through, and then the next piece connected, which is how I was gonna do it without thinking that actually once you put the nail through here, the nail's gonna obscure the section underneath, making it quite difficult to push this piece on. So I'm not quite sure how they do it. I'm trying to get the top to fit into the groove. Oh, so it's done at an angle. So what, we don't even need a nail gun? We could just revert to the original idea, which was I was just going to do nail them in by hand. But my worry was how you set them in far enough without damaging the board. Because obviously you get closer and closer and you're just working in this tiny crevice. Just watching that video has told me that you can get a little tool called a nail set. Which is a little kind of metal thing with a pointed tip. Looks like a nail gun titan has got a, a, a lengthier stay <laughs> inside the nick. It turns out he hadn't relented, so he's gone back in. <laughs> nail set, boring. But Chris came up, he made us get some of this wood and metal quick dry gloss. And it's for outdoor use, I think. And we used it for the hatches originally because they're sort of semi outside, aren't they? But we're thinking if it could actually work for protecting the shower tray. I'm going to bang it on. I know what's going to happen. I'll bang it onto the shower tray. And then in the comments, you'll tell me it's the completely wrong thing. <laughs> we'll have to sand it off again, won't we? I mean, the tin, it does. It does have a little radiator down there. Radiators are made of steel. Our shower tray is made of steel. 
Should be fine, shouldn't it? Let's go for it. Let us know in the comments if it's the uh, completely wrong thing. You can't roll with this bad boy on either. You've got to do it with a brush. So I, I hope it's going to come out even-ish and look all right. So a little update for those behind. This is our absolutely disgusting steel shower tray. It's made of steel. I mean, that's going to be a little bit cold on the old feetlings in the winter, isn't it? But Becca likes recycling and I've got her back. Anyway, I scraped it, I red oxided it, and now I'm on to painting it the final coat. But is it the right stuff I'm painting it with? Really thick this stuff. And a few people said, like, why don't you just take it up to a spray paint place, 20 quid, all sorted, and it'll be all lovely and smooth. You meant to do the corners again first? I don't know. But, you know, we had this paint left over from the hatches and, and we wanted to reuse it, really. Apply thick, as it said. Again, the sun is out, so you'd think it would dry great, but again, it is in the shade. Fairness, I'll probably do the spout separately. And I think we'll probably put another, another coat on that as well, once it's done. Grab a smaller brush so we can get into the spout. Okay, so we're all done. Let's see what Becca thinks. There she is. Put army jacket on. Chris keeps taking the mick out of my wonderful waistcoat, but you know what? It keeps me warm, so I don't care. She's trying to be like that Vera, that, that crime program that's on what channel? Ch ITV or something? <laughs> no. Because the time it takes to get a new person up to speed will have solved it. So I'll just finish the shower tray with the, the white coating. Looks all right, a bit t hit and miss, but I think it might need another other coat. Did you key it? Key it? Did you key the red oxide before you put it on? No, I don't think so. Are you meant to key it? The paint might just eventually flake off because it doesn't adhere to the under, the paint layer underneath basically as well. Have to get some more paint stripper then and start stripping all this off again, won't I? <laughs> See, this is what happens when I'm left by myself to do jobs that I've never done before. I thought I was quite a good painter. You are a good painter. It's just, you're right. it's just something you overlooked. It's all right. It's a new one, isn't it? It's the new hatches. <laughs> Done the hatches twice, now it's the shower tray for the next two years. So Bex has sanded all the old floorboards so that we can repurpose them for here in the kitchen. They're not nailed down yet, and that square at the back there is where we've got an underfloor hatch, a uh, inspection hatch, that we're going to use as a little cupboard. So I just had a thought that I have to make sure to leave a bit of a gap around the edge of the hatch or any time you go to take it up it'll just press against these i'm gonna leave like that much of a gap basically yeah around each of the edges to ensure that when you pull it up it doesn't get stuck quite the carpentry wizard isn't she she is no longer the pride of eaton soken she is itv's very own vera <laughs> how weird pet <laughs> Oh, hey, pet. Okay, what's happening? I have reached a point with the floor where we have these two little indents here, one under there and, and, the, and a cupboard. And I'm a little bit worried about cutting all the flooring for those bits and basically running out for the rest of the hallway because, you know, this we just took this floor up and some of it was a bit rotten, so I don't know exactly how much extra that we'll have. So, alas, I have arrived at the conclusion that I'm going to start actually nailing this properly down to the floor and then I can start to sort of roughly lay out the hallway and see how much wood I have got and if there's going to be enough left over to do these or if I need to use something else. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, I have the array of flooring tools right here. Grab adhesive. Check. Grab adhesive gun thingy majiggy. Check. Hammer. Nails. Check. And lastly, my nail punch set. You're well cocky with them, aren't you? So basically, what I'm going to do, slap a bit of glue on the back of them. Put them in position and then at an angle put a nail down here because you just lay that on the top of your nail head and you hit there and it will embed it into the tongue so it's nice and flush and your next piece of flooring will sit on that tongue. I wish me luck because it's all well and good when it's laid out like this but now it's precision time which is kind of scary. Pull back up again. You did all this did you? Yeah. Down there. Dobs of glue. Get it in place. 
this bit. One down, 100 or something to go. Oh. Well, it's about, about 20 to go. 20? <laughs> it's just Now onto the nail nailing, because that first one just had to be stuck down. There's no nails going through that one. So now we're going onto the nail gun, aren't we? Let me go. nail punch that. And she nails, courtesy of Stanley. He's a very nice man. Now the showing off bit. It's going to be a long old day. There you go. Is it in? Yeah, and that's flat so that it, the next piece will slot on it okay. Even though... Still a bit sad and upset about the nail gun situation, but you know. I am your manual nail gun. Yeah. There's your manual nail gun. So we've run into a little problem. I've run into a little problem laying down this floor. So it all flows amazing. But we come to this little section here, you can see a pretty big gap starting here and it needs to be sat right up against it really. So we're going to take a few of these up. Maybe the way to go is to glue them instead of hammering them because that way we, they can sort of jiggle about a bit once they're down. What do you reckon? I think there's a couple of problematic boards. I've had the floor laid out like several times and it's all been fine actually but there's one board that we think in particular that's just thrown everything else out because it's not sitting quite at the right angle so we'll take a few up and see if we can correct the problem this one doesn't quite sit in right it's fine it not sitting in there right but then you get about five along and we're here and we started noticing problems with this one didn't we and this one here now is completely out. It's about a millimeter in compared to that one, which it sticks out, so it throws that out, and that angle's going to get bigger. So get them all up again. What do you reckon? Just snapped it. It snapped the board. Where? Oh, that one. Sand it. Sorry. Good so far. For sanding them all, you cut them all into place. That's just getting it down properly. Come on, have a cup of tea. 